First of all, SpaceX is aiming to fly a new trajectory. The next Starship launch should be happening in a week from today, and this is the third test flight of Starship, so I'm going to be trying to provide some Starship-related news every single day gearing up for the launch. The first two tests called for Starship to complete nearly one orbit before re-entering and splashing down near Hawaii about 90 minutes after liftoff from the company's star-based complex in South Texas. Now the gigantic vehicle is targeted for a splashdown in the Indian Ocean nearly 65 minutes after liftoff. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission voted unanimously in favor of a resolution to authorize a land swap with SpaceX. This is something that's been in the works for a while, but now... The Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission will acquire 477 acres near the Laguna Arascosa National Wildlife Refuge Bahia Grande Unit. This is an exchange for approximately 43 acres from Boca Chica State Park. The tracks in green showed the land that the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission would provide to SpaceX in the proposed land swap. The land in orange is Boca Chica State Park. So notice where the land in green is located close to. That 43 acres that SpaceX will receive will allow them further expansion of Starbase, which we know that they've been working hard on day and night. We had the bomb dropped on us yesterday that sorry to those who live in Hawaii, but SpaceX is now aiming for Starship to land in the Indian Ocean. No longer off the coast of Hawaii, which has been the planned trajectory for quite some time now. Jonathan McDowell shared the estimated Starship IFT-3 planned trajectory and you can see it here in these images. And many question asked T.O. Jonathan. Why did they make the change from Hawaii to the Indian Ocean? Jonathan McDowell says they are testing firing the Raptor for a second burn, possibly a deorbit burn, but of course as usual he says they haven't provided any real details of the trajectory such as Paragi Apogee before and after the burn, which he finds annoying. And someone speculated that this leaves a lot of room if the engines fail to fire for the quasi-deorbit burn so they thought that maybe Starship would land in the Pacific, but Jonathan says he still thinks it's going to land in the Indian Ocean, not the Pacific. The deorbit burn is likely small, and the length of the NOTAM or NOTAS to Mariner's area corresponds to the range of complete burn to no burn. This new flight path enables us to attempt new techniques like in space engine burns while maximizing public safety the company stated. Will we witness a breathtaking orbital ascent, the graceful touchdown of two stages? or perhaps something entirely unexpected? While these moments are undoubtedly significant, the voyage holds a myriad of other noteworthy events. Yesterday, SpaceX unveiled the launch schedule Central Standard Time. According to the anticipation, esteemed space reporter Christian Devonport confirmed on X that the FAA is on the brink of approving the license modification necessary for SpaceX's third Starship launch attempt. This milestone is made possible by SpaceX's meticulous preparations culminating in the successful completion of the wet res rehearsal test. Looking ahead to the upcoming flight, SpaceX has recently updated the official timeline on their website. Assuming no last-minute changes, the entire process is projected to span approximately four hours, commencing at 7 a.m. and concluding by 11 the same morning. While the actual duration may vary, this time frame provides ample flexibility for SpaceX and other systems involved. During this period, a multitude of processes will unfold, categorized into two distinct phases, pre-flight and in-flight. Let's start by examining the pre-flight procedures. Approximately one hour and 15 minutes prior to liftoff, SpaceX's flight director will confirm the commencement of propellant loading. This critical step is estimated to last between 20 to 30 minutes. At about 53 minutes before liftoff, the crucial process of loading liquid oxygen and liquid methane onto the stages will commence. Prioritizing the booster for fuel loading is strategic, given its larger size compared to the ship. This sequence ensures that both stages are filled concurrently, minimizing potential fuel wastage due to wait times. Moreover, beginning with the booster enhances mass distribution and stability, preventing the upper stage's substantial 1,300-ton mass from exerting excessive pressure on the lower stage. In a notable improvement, the fuel loading process for this launch is anticipated to be expedited, potentially completing in under an hour instead of the previous time frame exceeding an hour. This efficiency stems from SpaceX's ongoing upgrades to the tank farm system, a project spanning several months. This enhancement was demonstrated during the recent wet dress rehearsal test, where SpaceX efficiently loaded over 10 million pounds of fuel within 45 minutes, 
a remarkable improvement from the previous 90-minute duration. Throughout the fuel loading process, a critical step involves cooling the Raptor engines in both stages. This precautionary measure serves to minimize temperature differentials between the engines and the fuel, mitigating the risk of sudden cold fuel, which could potentially damage sensitive engine components such as injectors and manifolds. Between 3 minutes and 30 seconds and 2 minutes and 50 seconds before liftoff, fuel loading on both the booster and ship will reach completion. Within the final 30 seconds, the SpaceX flight director will conduct a final verification before launch. Upon readiness, the flame deflector will be activated just 10 seconds prior to liftoff. Then at approximately 3 seconds before launch, the engines will ignite, marking the exhilarating moment we've all been anticipating. Liftoff Similar to Flight 2, the transition from engine activation to departure from the launch pad will be brief, lasting only about 3 to 5 seconds. This swift process minimizes the impact of thrust on the launch pad, despite SpaceX's enhancements to the launch pad infrastructure. At liftoff, all 33 engines will spring to life simultaneously. Following the lessons learned from the IFT-1 flight, which encountered some engine issues, the subsequent IFT-2 showcased the impressive coordination of all 33 engines, working harmoniously after liftoff, generating unparalleled thrust. Therefore, in the third flight, we anticipate a repetition of this remarkable moment. Prior to engine ignition, the water deluge system will activate, spraying approximately 350,000 gallons of water to mitigate the intense heat and pressure produced by the 33 engines. SpaceX's confirmation of the system's effectiveness in the second flight ensures its utilization in Flight 3 as well. After departing from the launch pad, Starship and Super Heavy will embark on a southeastern trajectory towards the Gulf of Mexico. Around T plus 52 seconds, both stages will encounter the Max-Q moment, where vehicles experience the highest mechanical stress. In Starship's successful navigation through Max-Q in previous flights, we remain optimistic about its performance during this phase. Following Max-Q, the pivotal stage separation will occur. Initiated around T plus 2 minutes 42 seconds, the booster engines will gradually be cut off, a process known as booster MECO, or main engine cut off. The outer and middle engines will deactivate, leaving only three inner gimbal engines to sustain thrust for the booster. Two seconds later, Starship's engines will activate, facilitating separation from the booster. During this transition, the hot staging mechanism introduced in Flight 2 will continue to play a crucial role, dissipating heat and pressure to safeguard both the ship and booster. SpaceX's thorough validation of this system post-wet dress rehearsal ensures its reliability for Flight 3. After parting ways, the two stages embark on their separate trajectories. Following separation, the booster undergoes engine relight at around T plus 2 minutes 55 seconds. This crucial step known as engine relight aims to rectify the failure experienced during Starship Flight 2, where booster engines either failed to activate or were prematurely shut down. Among the speculated causes, fuel sloshing during separation is believed to be primary. SpaceX's focus is now on addressing these issues, ensuring post-separation engine functionality to facilitate a controlled landing. Approximately a minute later, at around T plus 3 minutes 50 seconds, the booster's boost-back engines gradually disengage as it navigates towards a controlled descent. By T plus 6 minutes 36, the booster enters the transonic phase, 10 seconds thereafter, the landing engine activates for roughly 20 seconds, aiding the booster in adjusting its posture and descent towards the sea surface. In approximately T plus 7 minutes and 4 seconds, the landing engine deactivates and the booster completes its mission by safely landing in the sea. Meanwhile, Starship, upon separation from the booster, initiates its own engines, comprising three sea-level engines and three vacuum engines to continue its journey to orbit. SpaceX prioritizes engine reliability underscored by an engine swap in early February before integration into the Orbital Launch Mount, or OLM. Notably, modifications to fuel control are underway to prevent leaks, which proved detrimental during the second flight, as highlighted by Elon Musk. Successful execution of this operation will propel Starship into orbit, aligning with Musk's declaration. Achieving orbit marks a significant milestone eagerly awaited by many. Yet beyond this achievement, numerous exciting developments await on the horizon.
About 8 minutes and 35 seconds post-launch, the Starship engine will cease operation, marking the initiation of two pivotal missions in SpaceX's itinerary. Firstly, around T plus 11 minutes 56, SpaceX will execute the payload door open and closed procedure, crucial for testing the reliability of this system and ensuring smooth payload deployment in orbit. Subsequently, SpaceX will undertake the second mission assigned by NASA, the propellant transfer demo. This operation entails transferring cryogenic liquid fuel from the header tank to the main, evaluating the functionality of cryogenic fuel in a vacuum environment and laying the groundwork for a ship-to-ship -ship refueling system in future flights. Following these missions, Starship will replicate a vital step akin to its counterpart, reigniting its engines in space at around T plus 40 minutes 46 seconds. These engines will guide Starship for re-entry at approximately T plus 49 minutes and 5 seconds. As per the previous plan, Starship will execute a belly flop maneuver to re-enter the atmosphere aided by the heat shield system. post twits rehearsal, thorough checks ensure the safety of this system. By T plus 1 hour, 2 minutes and 16 seconds, Starship will transition into a transonic and subsonic state. Guided by landing engines, Starship will approach the ocean surface, splashing down at approximately T plus 1 hour and 4 minutes 39 seconds. However, with the latest update, Starship's landing trajectory has been modified. Instead of circumnavigating three quarters around the Earth before landing, it will now touch down in the Indian Ocean region. SpaceX cites, this new flight path enables us to attempt new techniques like in-space engine burns while maximizing public safety. Those are the plans for the upcoming test and remember that all times are approximate. However everyone hopes that there won't be much error because SpaceX has geared up very carefully for Flight 3 including upgrading both the vehicle and orbital tank farm. We're just a week away from the special mid-March event and SpaceX has completed nearly all of the major hardware milestones in. Preparation for the test The company recently performed a critical fueling test this month at its Starbase facility near Boca Chica, Texas. During the test over 10 million pounds of liquid methane and liquid oxygen were pumped into the rocket. Starship Flight 3 preparing for launch SpaceX CEO Elon Musk wrote in a post on X accompanying photos of the fueling test. Nevertheless SpaceX still has one more hurdle to overcome which is the FAA's launch license. The tweet on March 6 also noted that pending regulatory approval. Recently the Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation at the FAA Kelvin Coleman said the agency was in the process of trying to facilitate the Starship launch licensing process. From a regulatory standpoint the timeline for the second week of March sounds about right. He shared this is again confirmed by Christian Davenport Space Reporter at the Washington Post. The FAA is very close to approving the license modification for the third SpaceX Starship launch attempt I'm told. It can be said that SpaceX Starship is on the threshold of a new level where it is able to demonstrate the capability needed for launching satellites and going to the moon. After this test flight SpaceX will further promote upgrading this vehicle and further shorten the distance between flights to complete nine flights by 2024 as planned. Exciting developments lie ahead on the next flight. With numerous upgrades and preparations underway, we anticipate the successful execution of the aforementioned processes. Marking a significant milestone for the Starship system and heralding a new era of development for SpaceX and Starship. This achievement will serve as the cornerstone for humanity's endeavors in launching people and cargo into orbit with a reusable system, paving the way for a lunar exploration, Martian colonization, and beyond. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time